Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. All the source code for each video tutorial is located on my website at javacjava.com. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. This tutorial is on the logical operators and and or. I'm going to go ahead and pull up my website here, javacjava.com. I hit the begin button and I'm going to scroll down to the logical operators and an OR tutorial. And this is the single ampersand and single pipe as opposed to my logical operators uh, double ampersand, double pipe, which is what's called the short circuit log, um, logical operators. And I recommend doing both of these tutorials kind of in um, right next to each other, you know, I just do one, do the other, and, and you can see the differences between the two. So we'll go ahead and pop into this one here. Logical operators and an OR tutorial. And that's a single ampersand, single pipe. In Java, the AND and the OR logical operators compare two or more logical expressions and return either true or false. This tutorial will cover the conditional AND operator and the conditional OR operator. The easiest way to explain how these two operators function is to go over a quick refresher on the IF statement. And by the way, this tutorial is going to be very similar to my short circuit logical operators tutorial and or tutorial, the double ampersand and the double pipe here. Okay, the if statement, the most basic, <coughs> excuse me, the most basic of the control flow statements is the if statement. The if statement evaluates a condition to determine if the result is either true or false. The conditional test is contained inside the set of parentheses located directly after the Java keyword if. If the condition evaluates the true, then the statement or statements inside the code block are executed. The code block braces are optional for execution of just a single statement. So we've got if in our condition, and if this evaluates the true, everything in the code block, um, these braces gets executed. Okay, uh, the conditional test can be performed using one of the Java relational operators, such as the equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to, and not equal to. So it's just a quick refresher on this here. So let's talk about the AND operator. What if we want to change the flow of a program based on the results of more than just one expression? Well, we could nest some if statements like this. We'll declare three integer variables, A, B, C, and D, and initialize them to five, six, and seven. So if C is greater than B, and C is greater than B, that'll return true. So everything in this code block between this opening brace and closing brace, we'll, ex we'll go ahead and execute. Then it'll try this next conditional, um, the if statement here. If B is greater than A, B is greater than A, if six is greater than five, then I'll go ahead and execute everything in this code block here. And it'll go ahead and use, we'll pass this string literal to the print line method. Okay, there's a much better and cleaner way uh, cleaner looking way to do the exact same thing and that's called the AND operator. The AND operator is placed between two or more conditional expressions <coughs> excuse me, get some water here and we'll check the result of each expression from left to right. If each and every one of the conditional expressions evaluate to true then the total result will return true and the code inside the code block will execute. So we've got our integer data type variables a b c initialized to five six and seven so here we go we've got our first conditional expression here our second conditional expression here so if c is greater than b which will evaluate to true and b is greater than a that evaluates to true right so each and every one of the conditional expressions evaluated true, so this is going to return back true, and everything inside the code block will go ahead and execute, and print line will display this string literal here. In closing, the conditional expressions in parentheses is optional. Sometimes it may, doing so makes it more readable. Most of the time it does. I'll, you can do it either way, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, then this simple little one here, I got a, another D variable, E variable, both the integer data type initialized to 8 and 9. And here we've got a whole bunch of conditional statements. If E is greater than D, 
and, so this is true, and D is greater than C, and C is greater than B, and B is greater than A. Everything evaluates to true, so it'll go ahead and print off everything inside of the code block there, which is the print line. Display this to the console here. So, um, each expression will be evaluated. If one or more of the conditional expressions evaluates to false, then the total result will return false, okay? So we've got our same, in this example, we've got our same integer declarations, or initializations, I should say. All those variables are initialized there. And we've got our if statement. So the first conditional expression is if E is equal to D. Now E is not equal to D, 8 is not equal to 9. So that is false, right? The single ampersand will go ahead and keep evaluating the rest of these, and I'll just note that false is over there, right? If D, so this is true, D is greater than C, if C is greater than B, that's true, and B is greater than A, that's true. But we have this one false here, right? So this code block will not execute. The whole entire thing will return back false. So what is the difference between the single ampersand or oper and operator and the double ampersand and operator? Good question. There's only one difference. The single and operator will evaluate each and every conditional expression. It'll go through and evaluate this and evaluate this and evaluate this and evaluate that. And then at the very end, it'll say, okay, was one of them false? If it was, we're gonna go ahead and do false. If all of them are true, right, we'll go ahead and do return back true. Now the double ampersand operator uh, and operator will Evaluate expressions from left to right, and if an expression evaluates to false, the total result will be false. Any remaining expressions will not be evaluated. So if we had double ampersands in place of all these single ampersands here, and it comes along and says, if E is equal to D, evaluates this expression here, which is false, right? It will not continue on evaluating the rest of these. It'll simply return back false immediately. So the double ampersand is, is, is considered a more efficient operator because it doesn't waste computing power evaluating expressions that really aren't going to determine any sort of, you know, change the flow of the program, right? A control flow statement, so. Double ampersand is more efficient than single ampersand, but you definitely need to know how they work in order to, you know, make sure that you can understand program flow and stuff properly there. So. Let's talk now about the OR operator, which is a single pipe OR operator. The OR operator is placed between two or more conditional expressions and will check the result of each and every expression from left to right. If one or more of the conditional expressions evaluate to true, the total result will be true. If all conditional expressions evaluate to false, the total result will be false. Okay, so in this example, I've set up a string data type and then we've got our our variable initialized to this string literal of blue favorite color is blue and then we got an int data type and we're initializing uh, variable a to five so here is our our or single or operator so if favorite color equals green this is going to be false or favorite color equals blue this is going to be true and or favorite color equals red or plus plus a equals 11. So this is false. This one here is false. This is false. This is false. And this is the only true statement in there. So uh, we, this, is our, this comes in with our one or more conditional expressions evaluate to true. So it is going to execute everything in this code block. It's going to return back true. But it will have evaluated everything along the way. Um, you'll notice this is the true statement here. It'll still go ahead and evaluate this. Now, and just, just outside of the code block, I go ahead and print out what uh, A is now equal to, since plus plus A will increase it by one there. Okay. Now we'll change the, the value um, of favorite color. We'll uh, do an assignment statement here to purple. And this is now going to return false. That's going to return false. That's going to return false. And that's going to return false. It'll still add up another one to A. So this will not print all expressions evaluated to false and A will now be equal to seven. A is six up here. So what is the difference between the single pipe operator and the double pipe operator? 
Good question. There really is only one difference. Um, the single pipe operator will evaluate each and every conditional expression. The double pipe operator will evaluate the expressions from left to right, and if an expression evaluates the true, the total result will be true. Any remaining expressions will not be evaluated. So, in this particular case up here, if we had double pipes here, here, and here, and it comes along and says his favorite color equal to green. Uh, no, that's false. If favorite color is equal to blue. Oh, that's true. We're not going to continue executing these, right? It'll go ahead and say, all right, this whole thing is true. Let's go ahead and um, execute all the statements inside of the code block. And A will still be equal to 5 because it would have never gotten to this point where it would have added 1 to A. Okay, so let's go ahead and scroll down here and highlight this. Hit Control C to copy or right click copy. And let's go ahead and bring the <coughs> browser off screen. Start search, type in CMD, which is the command prompt. If you're running Windows 7 or earlier, you can go to start run, type in CMD. First thing you want to type in is Java C. A whole bunch of stuff should scroll by. If it doesn't, if you get some sort of strange error, go ahead and look at my tutorial for installing the Java Development Kit, the JDK. You're gonna make sure, you're gonna need to make sure you've got that installed properly before these tutorials will really help you out a lot there. Let's go type in CLS to clear the screen. Type in CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory. Backslash tells it to go down to the root. We'll type in MD, which is short for make directory Java. I already have it, but if you didn't, it would go ahead and create it for you. CD Java, and let's go ahead and do make directory and or, and CD and or. We'll type in notepad and or.java, and or.java is going to be our source code file name, and let's hit enter on that. Control V to paste, or you could right click and select paste. So we've got our class definition of and or up here. Uh, we've got our main method entry point right here. And let's see, I basically have everything that I talked about on the web page right here. So there's no real need to go over them again here. Let's go ahead and just save this out and let's run it. And then we'll just do a quick recap of some stuff here. So let's go type in CLS and Java C for the Java compiler. And and or.java is the name of the source code file we're going to pass to it to compile. And it compiles it. Now we'll type in Java and we'll invoke the and or class here that we just created and compiled. And basically what we get is exactly what we expect there. So the first one here, uh, both expressions evaluate to true. So it goes ahead and prints these off. Um, all of these expressions evaluate to true, so it goes ahead and prints that off. And then over here, one of these expressions evaluated to false, and that's this one right here. So it never prints, this will never print. It just go ahead and executes the, the false, you know, the else on here and prints the print line, the blank line right here, okay? Um, this next line here, favorite color equals blue is going to be equal to true. So at least one expression evaluated to true, and we can see that printed off there. A is now equal to six, right? So the plus plus A executed right here, and that added one to the initial value of A up here, which was five, okay? Uh, now we'll change our favorite color to purple. So this will not print all expressions evaluated to false. As you can see, that did not print, but now A is equal to seven because we hit this plus plus A again here. So just to kind of show you here, what I'm gonna do is, is put in the double pipes here. <coughs> and run this again. And what that's going to do is that's going to cause this this expression right here is going to evaluate to true, so these two will not even get executed. So plus plus a won't won't even it, that won't even get hit there. A will be equal to five, so a will still be equal to five now on our first line. So this line should say a is now equal to five. Let's go ahead and save this, recompile it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen. Oop, I just compiled it again. I just hit the up arrow on my keyboard to bring that. Okay, so this is exactly what we expected right here. So that's the, 
That's kind of the major difference between the two there is that this will just go ahead and short circuit and the single version of it will evaluate each and every expression. So let's go ahead and just put this back here, save it, recompile it, run it again, right back to where we started. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this, close out of that. I'm gonna, on the final thoughts here, I'm just, just gonna reiterate to be sure to check out my tutorial on the short circuit, you know, logical operators tutorial, the double ampersand and, and the double pipe or tutorial. You will need to know the subtle differences between the two versions. Uh, in the future, when you come across the double ampersand and the single ampersand, or the double pipe and the single pipe, the and or the ors, the two different flavors of them there, you'll understand how the flow of the program will play out. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.